Never Let Me Go is a novel by Kashiro Ishiguro. It is set in the late 1990s England when cloning first came to be known. The story is a first-person narrative by Kathy H. Kathy H. recalls her childhood with Ruth and Tommy in a sort of private school called Hailsham. Students here are all clones made for medical uses, but as kids, none of them understand this. All they knew was that they are different. It is important for them to be healthy, cigarettes are not good, and being creative is one of the most important things for a student. Guardians act like teachers to educate and look after the students. One of the guardians, Miss Lucy, told the students that their future were already settled for them. She told the students that their only purpose of life is to donate their vital organs, and that is the only point of their lives. Quote, none of you will go to America, none of you will be film stars, and none of you will be working in supermarkets as I heard some of you planning the other day. Your lives are set out for you. The students will first become a carer, taking care of other donors, then they will start donations themselves, eventually they will complete. None of the students really understood this because they are still kids at the time. A few days later, Miss Lucy was fired. After they turned 16, the three kids set foot outside of Helsham for the first time. They were sent to a place called the Cottages in which they wait until they're old enough to become a carer. It is there that they heard the rumor about deferrals. The rumor said that if two Helsham students could prove that they are properly in love with one another, they can earn three years themselves. Although it sounds tempting, the three kids only regarded it as a rumor. By the way, Ruth and Tommy were together for years at that time. Years later, Kathy becomes Ruth's care when Ruth was close to completing on her second donation. Ruth, knowing she doesn't have much time left, apologized to Kathy about taking Tommy away from her. According to her, Kathy and Tommy are meant for each other and stand a chance to earn a deferral in the rumor. She gave Kathy the address to Madame's house, who was a lady back at Hailsham, and told them to talk to her. Then Ruth dies. Tommy and Kathy came together just as Ruth wished and went to Madame's house to ask for the deferral. Surprisingly, their old Hailsham principal, Miss Emily, was there as well. The two ladies told Ruth and Tommy that the deferral does not exist. It's just a rumor. They also revealed to the couple about the condition of other clones just like them in the world. As people enjoy the longer lifespan because of the donated organs, they also refuse to recognize the existence of clones. This is why many clones live in terrible conditions since when they are a baby until the day when they complete. But Hailsham was different. It shielded the students from the cruel world and provided the clones with a normal childhood by not telling them about their future. Tommy disagrees and thinks the truth should not be held back for any reason. After a few months, he dies on his fourth donation. After Tommy's death, Kathy carried on her life as usual. She tried not to think about Ruth, Tommy, or her upcoming future of donation and death. But now, as she is left alone to face all these problems, the pressure and helplessness made her cry as she looked at a sunset at the end of the book. And we're not done yet. There are two major conflicts in the entire novel. The first is man versus society. Just like Miss Lucy said, none of the clones will be anything after they grow up except dying on the operation table. But the thing is, the clones are exactly 100% the same from the models both physically and mentally. So why are the models able to use the vital organs from the clones to live a longer life? Adding on to that, the normal person will have a future open to all kinds of possibilities. They can become anything they want to be, well, in theory. The clones also want to become anything they want to be, but their society refuses to recognize them as actual humans with a complete soul and forbids them to follow their dreams. Just like the handmaids are walking wounds, the clones are also only a bag of walking organ supply. The second conflict in the novel is men versus oneself. Because the clones are exactly the same as their models, it leads the clones to question about their own existence. Questions such as, am I the same as my model? If yes, why do I have a different future? What is the purpose of my life? These questions all lead to the final problem, that is, who am I? Never Let Me Go is an undoubtedly a sad, sad story. The few sparks of love and hope in the novel only adds up to the cruelty of reality and the irrevocability of fate that is demonstrated throughout the book. In this way, Never Let Me Go evokes its readers to consider the duality of cloning, genetic modification, and furthermore, any seemingly beneficial improvement in modern times.